of the time when I make this show, I follow a schedule. It might not seem like it, but I do. And it just so happens I didn't do any planning and just looked up cool cocktails. And today I've stumbled upon one that actually takes me back to the roots of this channel. So today we're going to talk about the Persephone's Elixir on Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I'm a bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today we're talking about a drink called the Persephone's Elixir, which sounds super pretentious, but I can assure you does have a valid reason for being called that. So the Persephone's Elixir is a variation on an El Diablo, which is a Collins style drink featuring tequila, blackcurrant liqueur, and uh, lemon juice cut with uh, club soda. The Persephone's Elixir is a riff on that that substitutes uh, Pama, which is a pomegranate liqueur and ginger beer, uh, and sort of brings it more into a bright spring, summer ginger beer affair. I mean, who doesn't love that? Now, what's funny about this is that um, I wasn't initially planning on shooting a video on this drink this, this particular day, but uh, I kind of got caught up in a bunch of stuff with my full-time job and didn't have time or energy to go out, find a bunch of stuff that I needed to get for the particular episodes we're doing, and just decided to wing it. And in doing so, I've come across a cocktail that I actually know the name of who came up with it. The Persephone's Elixir was invented in some year at some place. I don't have either of those bits of information, but I can assume New York sometime in the mid 2000s by a cocktail master mixologist uh, named Eben Freeman, who has been a huge part of the New York cocktail bar scene for quite some time. Apparently he had a deal going on with Palma at some point, either that or just found it very fun to work with because he is behind two different like theologically based, like theologically named anyway, cocktails featuring the liqueur. Uh, he invented the uh, Persephone's Elixir as a riff on an El Diablo, and uh, it uses a specialized liqueur called Pama. Pama is a pomegranate liqueur that is a vodka, tequila, uh, a vodka and tequila base uh, made with pomegranate juice. And it's interesting stuff, it's really cool, and it appears both in this drink and a drink called the Forbidden Sour, which is where why I'm, I'm so excited to do this video comes from. <laughs> Depending on how f how long you've been watching the show or how far back you've decided to go, you may or may not have ended up in the weird old days playlist. Um, the few videos that I made prior to developing this you know, set and making a standardization of the show, um, where I did a video on the Forbidden Sour, as well as a variation that I came up with called the Garden of Eden. Even Freeman came up with the Forbidden Sour as well. So when I was looking up cocktails basically by their name to see what was the most fascinating sounding one, I stumbled onto it, figured out it was him, and was super ecstatic to share yet another drink of his. Uh, now before we make the cocktail, I do want to talk about the name Persephone's Elixir a little bit because like many interesting and good cocktails that have unique and fascinating and kind of pretentious names, there's actually a reason for it. <laughs> so it refers to the uh, the abduction of the goddess uh, Persephone, who I don't know if they're a goddess or they're a part of Greek mythology, and uh, they're captured by Hades and taken to the underworld. And there's a whole marriage thing that happens. In essence, it's tied to the sort of uh, mythological and like. I guess spiritual belief in what a pomegranate represents. It's it's a combination of like the durability of life, and in this case, it refers to their marriage. And essentially, uh, Persephone is married to Hades by eating a couple of pomegranate seeds. Yeah, the whole story goes that this you know Hades abducts her, they get married. Um, this really pisses off Demeter, Persephone's mother. So she goes down to the underworld, uh, probably beats the shit out of Hades because that's usually how it goes. What? <laughs> And it ends up being the case that for two thirds of the year, um, she's in the real world, you know, the regular overworld, and then, or on Mount Olympus or whatever. And then for one third of the year, she's down in the underworld with Hades. And when she comes back from the underworld to the overworld, there's spring. That's the Greek mythological explanation for spring, which is actually really cool. And I think gives the drink a lot of cool credence. I, I didn't know any of that, honestly. I know next to nothing about, um, about Greek mythology specifically. 
And uh, thank you, real quick then, to my roommate Tia, who is significantly more in touch with all of these things, uh, and a lot more knowledgeable in that direction than uh, I could ever be, uh, and for explaining that story to me like I'm an infant, because honestly I probably wouldn't have understand it, understood it if I had to read it in like ancient Greek or something. Anyway, that's enough talking about the trick, let's go ahead and make a Persephone's elixir. So, a Persephone's elixir is actually a very simple drink, which is not unsurprising, but with a name like that, you think it might be kind of complicated. Uh, really, it's three ingredients and a lengthener, which is really convenient if you're not trying to whip up a bunch of cocktails for like a spring, you know, picnic party or something along those lines. This is nice and easy and frankly, very approachable in terms of flavor. I think, like I said, I haven't tried it, but the premise makes sense. So you're gonna need a couple things. Uh, you're going to need a tequila, specifically a Blanco. Um, the one thing that this recipe stipulates the most is that you should use a Blanco tequila because it won't obscure or uh, pull away from the flavor of the Palma, lemon, or ginger beer that is also going into the cocktail, uh, the way that like a Reposado or a Añejo would. Blanco is what you wanna go for. I'm gonna use Sousa, which is a pretty low shelf tequila, but one that I think is valid for this cost. <laughs> Frankly, it's just a nice tequila, despite its low cost and ready, 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 ready availability. So use whatever you want. We'll also need pama, pomegranate liqueur, uh, and uh, lemon juice and ginger beer. That's enough, let's make it. Like most lengthened uh, Collins style cocktails, we are going to have to shake this one. And it actually starts off with just one ounce of our tequila. For all intents and purposes, this is actually a pretty low proof cocktail. The only two alcoholic components are going to be the palma and the tequila. Palma is only like 17% alcohol by volume. It's pretty low down there. And because we're adding so much dilution to the tequila with the ginger beer and the lemon juice going into here, it's actually gonna be a nice lower ABV cocktail that you can sip at like brunch, if anything. Cracking open our brand new bottle of Pama. We're gonna go ahead and do three quarters of an ounce. This stuff is pretty impressive, actually. It has a very unique character that feels a lot like fresh pomegranate juice, but the additional impact of it being made with a very small amount of tequila, specifically they state a touch of tequila, it's got this cool character to it that makes it stand out from something like the Kuiper pomegranate, which, yeah, you could theoretically use that if you couldn't find Pama, but this is actually readily available at most large scale liquor stores. So go for it if you can find it. Next up, we're going to need three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Finally, a piece of citrus gives me the correct amount of juice. Yes. Uh, and that is actually it. So we're gonna go ahead and add ice to chill uh, and dilute this while we shake and then serve it in a Collins glass. One cube cracked and one cube whole as always. We're gonna cap up, tap down, and then we're gonna shake this for actually 10 to 12 seconds rather than 12 to 15. Because the volume in here is so low, we don't want to overdo it, to add too much dilution and weaken the flavor of the cocktail. To serve this, we're gonna grab a Collins glass. And in my case, um, I, none of my glassware is chilled. I don't have the freezer space for it. So I'm gonna crack just one cube of ice in here to help the drink maintain its temperature. Ideally, you would wanna chill the glass and chill the ginger beer we're gonna to top this with, which I have done. I'm just gonna give it a leg up by adding some ice. With the cocktail finished up, I'm gonna grab this chilled ginger beer that I forgot I had already chilled. Uh, and I'm going to crack that and then start our effervescence by just pouring some into the bottom of the glass. It helps keep the whole drink carbonated for a longer period of time, because if you just had it on top, it all kind of escapes. This gets it throughout the drink. One last shake before we double strain our cocktail into the glass. We're gonna finish that up by topping it up with our ginger beer. And then for garnish, we actually need both a lemon and a lime wedge. As far as garnishing drinks with both citruses goes, uh, it's not you know, as common as it probably could be. For all intents and purposes, there's not really a reason why you couldn't whenever you use a wedge. Uh, use both for the sake of having some variable color, but you know, to each is their own. Gonna place some uh, angular cuts into a wedge of both lemon and lime. Gonna mount both of those on the edge of our glass like so. And that is served forth as a Persephone's elixir. It is delightfully pretty. <laughs>
Alrighty, with our station cleaned up ever so slightly, let's go ahead and give our Persephone's Elixir a taste. Cheers. <laughs> oh my god. That's... Come on. What? <laughs> That's... That's dangerous as shit is what that is. <laughs> oh my god. The cocktail, uh, but, you know, on its own, it, it's a lot of ginger. Ginger beer, as opposed to ginger ale, if you don't already know, has a way more potent, spicy, impactful, heat-adjacent uh, ginger flavor. And it's a lot of that. And what I think is really great there is that with so little tequila, it's not like playing off of tequila minerality or that really strong punch of flavor that tequila can have, especially a Blanco. It's, it's sort of modifying it. And it no longer reads like tequila. In fact, it actually doesn't read like alcohol at all anymore. <laughs> this tastes like juice, like pomegranate ginger juice, or like a pomegranate ginger soda. And that's really fucking dangerous because there is alcohol in it. It's not taking away from anything, but it, it's also like, ah, it's so hard to, hold on, I'm losing my thoughts here because this has blown me away. Yeah. It tastes exactly like pomegranate, like straight up. <laughs> Maybe not exactly, there are some other stuff going on here. So it's it's a lot of pomegranate. The poma is the predominant strongest, easily, the strongest flavor in the drink, uh, followed immediately by ginger. But those two things are playing off of each other and allowing the sort of minerality of the tequila and the acid of the lemon to have like a canvas to work with. It's definitely, you know, a little bit more tart um, than other cocktails, because the only sweetness in here is the palma. Uh, so it's hedging its bets on that, and it works really, really well. <laughs> What's fascinating is that that ginger and pomegranate, those flavors being so strong and kind of bouncing back and forth with each other and making this new synthesis, it doesn't hide anything from the tequila, and it's actually showing it really, really well if you know how to break down a cocktail to look for that. In this particular case, you take the sip, ginger, pomegranate, the lemon tartness is making that very bright. You don't read lemon per se, but it's definitely a component factor. And then the flavors of those of that tequila comes in after that. So it's like lemon tartness and some of that lemon oil bitterness. And then ginger and pomegranate, specifically the palma pomegranate, which is like a very realistic pomegranate juice kind of flavor. Um, almost as if you were to like, if you could distill pomegranate juice, that's how it reads. It's very pure tasting in a way. And then afterwards, you get this kind of grassiness, this sort of uh, green uh, cut grass and, and mineral notes that come from tequila, especially Blancos, which are much more loud than uh, a Reposado or an Añejo. It's, it's it, it, for as little as in there, it's actually kind of loud and not in a bad way. The sort of bold flavors we've introduced here have made that kind of that kind of potentness of tequila for a lot of you know inexperienced tequila drinkers that or inexperienced drinkers in general actually that can kind of turn people off. Um, this is like really really well balanced to a degree that it doesn't scare you. It's 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 really good tequila drink. This is a really really good like sweet alternative to a Paloma. If you wanted a sweet tequila-based drink with fruit flavors in it uh, and some citrus uh, that mirrors that same feeling, this is it. And it's really, really good. Now, the one thing is that it's important to note, you know, I, I do uh, the show every week and I'm always trying to garnish drinks correctly whenever I can um, because a garnish is not just you know, a, a pretty thing to look at. It can be, but a garnish is also a part of the cocktail. It is one of its ingredients. And at present, there's no, there's no lemon, or excuse me, lime juice in here. There's only a little bit of lemon juice. Now that I've kind of sipped it down, I'm going to express to you <laughs> the importance of giving your drinkers choice. A garnish needs to be mind mindfully selected because the point is that if you put a lime garnish on like the edge of like a margarita, for example, you're expecting that a drinker might want a little bit more lime. So they can put it in their own drink. So I'm curious to know what it'll be like now. You know, that's actually really nice. The additional, you know, citrus juice 
and having it be a split base, you know, both lemon and lime is, is really nice. Uh, and, it, and lime pairs just so well with tequila in general. Um, there's a reason you give people salt and lime when they do tequila shots. It works. So uh, that is the Persephone's elixir. Uh, I for sure did not expect this to be as good as it was um, because the last time I made an even Freeman cocktail with Palma in it, I wasn't a huge fan. Then again, back then I was deep into a neat whiskey phase and I've since grown out of that. So maybe my palate is a bit more mature and mature enough to respect something as subtle and restrained and refined as this. That or maybe I just like things that are good now and didn't back then. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video on Even Freeman's uh, Persephone's Elixir, please go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next episode. I make these videos every single Friday for sure, and then bonus episodes come out, especially lately, really frequently on Tuesdays. So if you're into mixology and cocktail content, follow me. I'm gonna be around for a while, and if you want me to do something specific, just comment it down below. I realize now, I've like never said that. I've never said that I'm like open to the idea of people suggesting stuff. I absolutely am. I think it'd be a lot of fun to just make a list of like five cocktails or five ideas that people want to see and just make them. Or like even just random ideas, like throw ingredients at me and see what I can come up with. I'm. 100% down for that, actually. <laughs> you can follow me on my socials, which are popping up on the screen now. Eventually, there will also be a Reddit, which will show up in the description down below, but I can't, you know, go back and change the fucking video, so I'm not gonna show up there. <laughs> I don't use those uh, socials as often as I should, and I'm trying to get better about that, so um, eventually you'll see, you know, nice fancy cocktail photos on Instagram, and then full recipes and, like, histories and, like, blog posts on Tumblr, Reddit, much of the same thing. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, do all that shit I just told you to do. And hey, watch a couple more videos. Every so often they appear in the top right corner of the screen and very, very soon there's gonna be like two of them right here and then my face over here. So thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, keep watching. Let me know how I'm doing. And hopefully you're enjoying yourself. You guys have a great rest of your day. Remember to drink responsibly and I'll see you all around. Goodbye.